Dear viewers, welcome back to another episode of Editorial Analysis by Trishti IAS. In this segment, we focus on important editorials from major newspapers such as The Hindu, The Indian Express, Life Mint, etc. for effective understanding of our students. Now, through this program, we primarily focus on three things. One, we try to link the editorial with that of the UPSC syllabus. Uh, secondly, we try to decode or decipher what are the key points that are mentioned in the editorial. And uh, lastly, and most importantly, we try to learn what are the key concepts, if any, that are mentioned in the editorial. Uh, dear viewers, we truly hope you love this initiative of Drishti IAS. Please, please feel free to give us your valuable suggestions so that we can strive to do better each and every day. So with a lot of gratitude in our heart to our viewers, uh, let us commence today's session of Editorial Analysis. Dear viewer, this video is available in Hindi as well. If you wish to watch it, please visit our Hindi YouTube channel, Drishti IAS. For your convenience, the link for this video in Hindi has been provided in the description below. Uh, for today's session, we have opted for the editorial titled Making Amends from the Hindu dated 29th September 2020. The editorial talks about the recent 13th Amendment that has to be considered and also the virtual summit that happened recently between India and Sri Lanka. Now, let us try to link this editorial with that of the UPSC syllabus. From Prelim's perspective, yes, it is very important. And also from Maine's perspective, where uh, we can link it with General Studies 2 with international relations. And to further narrow it down, we can connect it to India and its neighborhood relations, uh, bilateral, regional and global groupings, and the agreements involving India and or affecting India's interest. Now, let us try to look at the key points that are mentioned in the editorial. Now, as you are aware, recently a virtual summit was held between uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the Sri Lankan Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa on September 26th. A joint statement was issued by both the countries and the key point in this joint statement uh, focused on India's stated policy of seeking to ensure equality, justice, peace and respect within a united Sri Lanka for the Tamil population. Now, India had also explicitly mentioned the need to carry forward the reconciliation process. How? Through the implementation of the 13th Amendment to Sri Lanka's constitution. Now, uh, we believe and the editorial also believes that India's appeal to Sri Lanka to address the aspirations of its Tamil minority will definitely find resonance and happiness among the Tamil-speaking populace, both in India and in Sri Lanka. However, the editorial has also faced certain concerns. See, now it is very doubtful whether the joint statement will have any effect because as most of the times a joint statement is usually it comprises of words and to make it effective, it has to be implemented. So this has been very doubtful. And also among policy experts, there is speculation that uh, far from implementing the uh, 13th Amendment, uh, the Sri, Sri Lankan government may also roll back the provincial Council system. See, now the provincial council system is part of the 13th Amendment and we will learn that as part of the key concepts. But this is just to tell you the concerns uh, so that we can focus on it later. Now, why is there this speculation? Because the current Prime Minister and his party has got a two-third majority which gives them enough power to uh, amend the constitution. And uh, now India does not want to force its hand on its smaller neighbor. Why? Because we also have concern about not pushing Sri Lanka towards China's sphere of influence. And therefore, we do not have much leverage over Sri Lanka currently. And uh, also another factor which is very common among most of these cases is that now there is little global interest in holding Sri Lanka accountable to its past promises on ethnic reconciliation and justice for wartime excesses. So these are the reasons why India is only going to wait and watch on how Sri Lanka is going to go ahead. You know, Sri Lankan uh, president has uh, stated that, you know, follow an India first policy and uh, it will always be beneficial uh, for both India and Sri Lanka. And hence, that is the only confidence we have and we are going to wait and watch. So that was the key uh, points and the concerns raised in the editorial and now we move towards the key concepts and of course we are going to focus on the 13th amendment. Now uh, the 13th amendment, what is it? See, it is an outcome of the Indo-Sri Lanka Accord of July 1987 to resolve Sri Lanka's ethnic conflict 
that had aggravated into a full-fledged civil war. Now, uh, before we go ahead, what was the India-Sri Lanka Accord of 1987? See, it was signed in Colombo on 29 July 1987 between the Prime Ministers of India and Sri Lanka. And it was also referred to as the Jayavardhane Rajiv Gandhi Agreement. Now, uh, what was this accord? See, it provided for a system of elected provincial councils across Sri Lanka. Now, you might be wondering why or what is so great about it. See, because see, Sri Lanka is a unitary country and the 1978 constitution had concentrated most of the powers in the center. All right. So, there was not much powers within the smaller provinces. So, what did this accord do or the agreement? It was aimed at finding a way, you know, forward on devolution of political powers to the then northeastern province comprising the Tamil dominated areas of the island country. Now again focus on Tamil dominated areas of the island country. Now with this in mind now let us come back to the uh, earlier point. Now uh, we spoke about Sri Lanka's ethnic conflict which aggravated into a full-fledged civil war. What was the civil war all about? Technically, it was a strife or a civil war that was fought between the Sri Lankan armed forces and the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elim, which was popularly referred to as the LTTE. Now, see, in Sri Lanka, uh, post the uh, independence and constitution was set, there was a big diversification between the uh, majority Sri Lankan population and the Tamil minority population. Uh, Sinhalese uh, Buddhism started gaining more power and majority and the Tamil population felt they were being subjugated. So a lot of issues led to a final full-fledged civil war. It led to the creation of uh, the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elim, which was later classified as an insurgency group. The uh, insurgency group, what did it do? It struggled to cause self-determination for the Tamil population and also it went ahead and demanded a separate state. Now post the civil war, uh, you know, in order to maintain some peace, that is why the 13th Amendment was, uh, you know, brought in as part of the outcome of Indo-Sri Lanka Accord. Now, this amendment, what did it do? It led to the creation of provincial councils and it assured a power-sharing arrangement to enable all nine provinces in the country, including the Sinhala majority areas, to self-govern. Now, uh, was this perfect? Were there issues? Absolutely, yes. There were so many issues associated with it. See, uh, when we say a provincial system, see, education, health, agriculture, housing, land and police. These were all supposed to be devolved to the provincial administrations. So now agreed, now they have devolved the past. But what is important in order to run education, health, housing, land, police, etc. It is that they also needed to be uh, given financial powers. All right. Uh, so there were restrictions placed on financial powers and also overriding powers were given to the president. And now with this restriction and the overriding powers given to the president, the provincial administrations did not serve any purpose. Also, see, we need to remember that, as we mentioned earlier, the 13th Amendment was the outcome of a civil war strife and it carries a lot of considerable baggage and hurt between the uh, Sinhala majority and the Tamil minority from the civil war years. So, interestingly, the 13th Amendment is also, you know, vociferously opposed by both the Sinhala Nationalist Parties and the LTTE. Now, why did the uh, Sinhala Nationalist Party uh, oppose it? Because they felt that the accord was an imposition of you know, upon them by India. They felt that India was interfering in the internal affairs of Sri Lanka. Now, while on the other hand, the Tamil polity felt that, you know, the 13th Amendment provided too less power and substance and it was practically of no use and they would still be subjugated. However, did the 13th Amendment hold any significance? See, yes, because of the simple fact that this is the only amendment that has so far spoken about, you know, uh, representing the constitutional provision that could settle the long pending Tamil question and bring about peace in our neighborhood. Now, uh, with that, we will also look at India-Sri Lanka relations. Now, uh, India-Sri Lanka relations, see, it has been almost 2,500 years old that we have had an established relationship. Now, we share a legacy of intellectual, cultural, religious and linguistic interaction. Also, trade and investment over the years have grown and there is cooperation in the fields of development, education, culture and Defense. Now, let us look at some of the key features, uh, you know, of India-Sri Lanka relations and let's not focus on everything, but what is of significance to us. Now, trade between both the countries have grown rapidly, especially after the entry into force of the India-Sri Lanka Free Trade Agreement in March 2000. Also, it is important to remember that India is the source of one of the largest foreign direct investments in Sri Lanka. Another factor is the development cooperation between India and Sri Lanka. India has committed, you know, almost close to US dollar 3 billion, out of which, you know, US dollar 560 million are purely in grants. Also, the Indian housing project. 
which is a flagship initiative of the government of India, is a form of development assistance to uh, Sri Lanka. India has committed to building around 50,000 houses for those affected by the civil war as well as for the estate workers in the plantation area. And other than this, we also need to look at the defense relationship between India and Sri Lanka. They both jointly conduct the military exercise Mitra Shakti and also the naval exercise Slinix. And uh, of course, we even have a trilateral maritime security cooperation agreement signed again by India, Sri Lanka and also the Maldives. And what is the aim of the security cooperation agreement? To improve surveillance, anti-piracy operations and reduce maritime pop pollution in the Indian Ocean region. Of course, there are also issues that crop up and which is a very uh, thorny issue between India and Sri Lanka is the issue of fishermen. Now, given the proximity of the territorial waters of both the countries, you know, especially in the Park Strait and the Gulf of Manar, you know, uh, this has led to, you know, incidents of uh, fishermen by mistake crossing the international maritime boundary line. And especially there were times when uh, the relationship between India and Sri Lanka was not so green and it led to, you know, firing at uh, each other, which led to deaths. So, in India and uh, you know Sri Lanka agreed to certain practical arrangements to deal with the issue of uh, fishermen in a more humane manner and uh, especially those who by mistake cross the international maritime boundary line. Interestingly, India and Sri Lanka also signed an MOU to help and equip the fishermen and give them nets and necessary amenities so that they can carry out their trade better and more peacefully. Now other than this, let's also try to look at certain important facts that we need to remember. Now, the uh, Gulf of Manar, which we spoke about earlier, is a very important region. It is endowed with three distinct coastal ecosystems, namely coral reef, seagrass bed and mangroves. Now, the Gulf of Manar is often referred to as the underwater tropical rainforest from a maritime perspective. Also, the Gulf of Manar National Park is a protected area of India consisting of 21 small islands and it is also a core area of the Gulf of Manar Biosphere Reserve. Now, as we mentioned about the distinct coastal systems of seagrass bed, see now it serves as an ideal feeding ground for dugong dugong. Now, what is dugong dugong? It is an endangered herbivorous marine mammal found in the Gulf of Manar and the Park Bay. Also an important fact to remember is the Elephant Pass, you know, which connects Jaffna and the northern part of Sri Lanka or the northern province and it is referred to as Elephant Pass. So with this, we have concluded the key concepts and the key uh, points that we had to learn from the editorial and now let us look at it from the UPSC perspective. Now uh, from a prelims perspective, of course we can expect questions related to 13th amendment or the Indo-Sri Lanka uh, accord. For example, uh, this is one question as an example I can use. Recently the 13th amendment was in news, uh, which country was involved in the 13th amendment? Option A, Sri Lanka, the United States, Myanmar or Bhutan? Answer, if you have thoroughly listened to this editorial, is Sri Lanka. Also related to geographical features, uh, see, uh, for example, the Gulf of Manar, uh, Marine National Park or the Biosphere Reserve, Dugong Dugong, which has already been asked. So these are all factors in international relations, you know, from a prelims perspective, they ask related to its uh, geography and positions as well. Also development projects, for example, uh, Indian Housing Project is a flagship uh, program of India implemented in which country? Again, they can give you four options. And if you've listened to this editorial, you will be able to mark Sri Lanka. Of course, defense exercises and all time favorite of UPSC where they can ask about Mitra Shakti or the Linux program exercises between India and Sri Lanka also the uh, trilateral security maritime cooperation now let us look at uh, some of the questions that have appeared earlier again uh, the elephant pass as uh, you know as I said sometimes seen in news is mentioned in the context of affairs of which one of the following countries if you have listened to this editorial you would have easily scored two marks by marking Sri Lanka also, with reference to Dugong, Dugong, a mammal found in India, which of the following statements is or are correct? If you've listened to this, it is, uh, you know, a herbivorous marine anim animal. Also, it is given legal protection under Schedule 1 of the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. And hence, your answer will be 1 and 3. And of course, it is not found along the entire coast of India. Why? Because it is found specially in the Gulf of Manar and not the entire coast of India. Now, uh, let us look at it from a mains perspective, of course, India-Sri Lanka relations. And this has been a very uh, favorite question of uh, UPSC. This is one question we could see, which was asked recently. In respect of India-Sri Lanka relations, 
discuss how domestic factors influence foreign policy. So you can talk about the whole 13th Amendment, the India-Sri Lanka Accord. Also, the uh, since this has been in news of late, we can expect a question related to 13th Amendment, uh, which is, uh, you know, they can ask you to critically examine. So from our side, we would like you to attempt this question. And it goes as forward. What is the uh, 13th Amendment to the Sri Lankan Constitution and why is it? contentious. So, uh, dear viewers, please feel free to write your answers in the comments below so that we can discuss this issue ahead. So, with this, we have concluded today's session of editorial analysis. Uh, we hope we have thoroughly done justice uh, to this topic. Please, please feel free to give us your valuable suggestions so that we can, you know, strive to do better each and every day. So, until next time, thank you, stay safe and good night.